What's going on everyone, it's Elliot here. And in this video, I wanna show you what books I read as an engineer, as an electrical engineer specifically, and the kind of books I put in my brain. And you may think that as an electrical engineer, I only read technical books, books about like math or physics, but that could not be further from the truth. I do read many of these books. And I'm gonna show you some of the technical books I read, which ones you should read as well, ones that are really good. But I would say 70% of the books that I read are non-technical in nature. I'm going to show you why that is and what kind of books they are. But anyway, let's get to it. So generally, a lot of the books I read, in this case, the technical ones are like more over here. Um, this is a really good book. It's called Computer Science Distilled. It gives you a really good uh, high level overview of computer science, like how to program, how to choose what languages and the different languages and how they're each utilized. Um, a bit more mathematical, this book is called Information Theory. It's also really good. It teaches you information theory and it's basically um like the, the science of information it's a branch of electrical engineering and computer science kind of at the interface that teaches you how information uh, is stored and this is really based on cloud shannon he's really like the legend of information and this is the foundation of modern day communication systems uh this is also another great book it's called digital signal processing scientist and engineer's guide this is a really really good book i highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in studying uh digital, digital signal processing um dsp and this is a really good book talks about everything like dsp software filters responses and it covers all the way from the basics like signals and systems and then later on it does start building um like here it shows you the time domain frequency domain for your transforms um and this, this is a really good book it's very well written i would highly recommend it um and then this book is written in arabic it's a very old book it's about sociology uh, it's a really good book you'll notice a lot of the books i read are like sociology and psychology and I think that's because we're humans, so it's really good that we study ourselves as humans. It's good that you understand yourself, why you behave, you understand why other people do the things they do. Some other really good technical books, um, there's this book, Synchronization, Digital Communication Systems. If you end up working on that kind of stuff, I started reading it. Um, if you want a book that's really good for MATLAB and Simulink, um, I think this book is really good, MATLAB and Simulink. Um, it's by Yang. And this one I think was actually quite expensive. I think it was like hundred bucks, but it's a really good book because many MATLAB books will kind of just throw examples at you and you won't really understand what's going on. But this one actually explains in detail what is going on. It will show you the code. It will show you even pseudocode and some examples, the equations. And I think there's an appendix that you can get download that shows you some of the examples in real life. So this is a really good book. Um, this book, The Essential RF and Wireless Guide, I would highly recommend it. I think it's a very good book if you consider going into RF and wireless and microwave stuff. Um, this is a, just a really good book. And, and I like it because it's very non-technical. Like, it's just very, like, high-level overview. It's just kind of, like, words and tables and pictures. And you don't have to be, like, an expert physicist or mathematician to understand. And it's going to teach you the concepts really well. In this case, this satellite communication example... Overall, this is a really good book. I would highly recommend it. And then going over this book, um, this Atomic Habits is a great book if you want to change your habits. Um, there's this book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. It's a wonderful book. I, I cannot recommend this book enough, especially if you want to be good at what you do um, as an engineer. This book is really cool, The Body Electric. It's kind of like kind of like a bit more mystical. It's like at the interface of like electromagnetics and mysticism because it kind of shows you how electromagnetics are like the foundation of life and how molecular structures and, 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 and nature, um, everything kind of behaves on like electro based on electromagnetics. And I really like that because I love electromagnetics and I think it is kind of the foundation of everything. Um, so yeah, that's very good. This book is also really good fiber optics. It's really old. It's like, I think from seventies or eighties, but I really like reading old books about topics because it goes through absolute fundamentals. Like if you were to read a new book on fiber optics, it's probably going to have a lot of like new technical stuff and it's going to be like nuances. But if you read a book that was really old, it's going to show you the absolute basics because this was probably written when this stuff was still being like invented in real time and being used um, and, and, and optimized. Um, and then here there are some, some of these are business books here. I have a lot of diet books. I think diet is very important. You should study what you eat because that's a fuel that goes in your body and eventually um, goes into your brain. So here there's some more novels. Here there's a bit more um, psychology books. There's a book about learning, some novels as well. Elon Musk's biography. I think this is a must read 
for every engineering student. Um, this technic this inserto, especially this book, Fooled by Randomness, I think this book is very important to read when just learning how to make decisions in life in general because it goes over probability, like the hidden role of chance. And it's, it's, it's kind of written like in a very difficult way. I would actually not recommend it to anybody who's like a non-native uh, English speaker because it's just written in such difficult language. But this is a really good book um, if you want to understand how to make decisions based on probabilities and not just like kind of randomness. Um, Flow, this is another, this is a, an excellent book. This is a really good book. Also, I think extremely important because a lot of the stuff that we do at work is kind of mundane. So this kind of teaches you things that you can do to make work a bit more rewarding. For example, if you have like a homework assignment, how to make, like how to be more excited to do it and be in the present moment while you're doing it and not just kind of dreading it. So over here, <laughs> no more Mr. Nice Guy. The title is kind of clickbaity, um, but... Okay, uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy is a really good book. It's actually, the title is very clickbaity because you're like, oh, No More what is this, a book about being like a dickhead? Like, no, not at all. It's a book about like learning how to not be manipulative and how to set boundaries with other people and how to deal with other people in a way where you get like what you want and everyone else is happy. It's actually a really good book. Um, then there's a few more books. There's some biographies. And then there's this guy, uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. This is a very important book. I also think this is another book that is a must read for everyone because it's about the concept of self-image. And the concept of self-image is so important because many people have like a certain way they look at themselves and they think that this is it. Like this is just how I'm born. This is how I am. This is my skill set and kind of have a fixed mindset. And Psycho-Cybernetics was amazing because it was written all the way in 1960. It was written by a plastic surgeon. A plastic surgeon noticed that when he would perform plastic surgery on people, they would start seeing themselves differently. So then they would start behaving differently. But then he got the idea of like, why do you need an external change before you start changing internally? And this book is basically about internal change, internally changing how you look at yourself and what you expect yourself and how you treat yourself and, and what you believe is possible. So I think that's a very important book. It's probably probably the most important book like ever because it's on mindset and self-image, how you look at yourself, which determines how you look at the world. I'm really huge on these kind of books. Um, then The Power of Now, I know this book, I, I bought it. It was, it was very promising, but it was written in a very boring way. So I kind of stopped reading it. Uh, Tribes, this is a very good book about like building teams and inspiring people. This actually was one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel. So it's a really good book. Compound Effect, another really good one, just about habits. Um, Think and Grow Rich, another really, really cl it's classic. It's a very good book. Uh, actually, in my opinion, this book should be like, like this is a really good book. This book is just so good. It's like, it has everything. Like it covers like, I think 17 steps that you can do on like how to improve different different areas in your life. I'm not even gonna bother talking about it because it's just kind of a classic. Everyone kind of knows this book, but it's, it's pretty good. I think Napoleon Hill is an absolute legend. Uh, the War of Art, I hate this book. I don't know why I still have that. I've read it, I read it once and it was just, oh, it was very disappointing. But now that I've walked you through some of the books I read, I actually have a book for you to read. Uh, I think there's a book that you should read, everybody should read. But more importantly, I think there's a book everyone should avoid. And here I'm gonna give a quick, friendly, negative um, feedback to this book. It's called Finish What You Start. And this book, um, with all due respect and love to the author, the author totally missed the point. This book was written for people who can't finish what they start, right? Including myself. Like I sometimes, I love too many things, so I get distracted very often. So then I, I, I saw the title and I said, oh, finish what you start. Like, it's probably gonna be amazing. And the author wrote this book, which is like more than 200 pages. And it just like, you, you start reading it and there's just so many different fluff and tactics. And, and I already got distracted by like page 10 and I totally forgot about it. And it's pretty ironic because it's called Finish What You Start and I couldn't even finish the book. So I, th I think the author totally missed the point because if you're gonna make a book called Finish What You Start, why are you gonna make it 200 pages and make it boring as hell? Like your target audience are people who cannot finish what they start. Like this book should be like 30 pages max, straight to the point and just like very tactical, you know? Uh, but it's, it's not, it's not at all. And it covers like 30 different methods. Like it should only have like one method that should generally work. And I don't know, like, I don't, I don't really like this books. On the other hand, one book that I really like, it's called The Dip by Seth Godin. And I think everybody should read this because this book is really good in teaching you how to quit. And now you might think, Ali, like, what do you mean quitting? Like, why do I want to quit? Don't successful people like never quit? 
Well, successful people quickly figure out what they're not good at and they quit that right away. Um, people who are not very successful spread their focus throughout like 10 different things where they're like mediocre at all of them because they don't want to quit any of them. So this book is really good. If you're at a stage in life where like you're doing too many things at once or like you're not sure what to do or like you're trying to figure out what you could realistically be the best in the world at doing, like assuming that's like an upper bound, this book really is, is what you should be reading. Now, I will say I also read novels, mainly science fiction novels. My favorite is the Professor Jameson saga. Well, this was written like a long time ago, like I think more than 80 years ago. And it's a book about space and cyborgs. And this is the book that I really, really like. I, I really like these kind of novels. I think it's important to read novels once in a while, just kind of have more creativity, imagination, and just kind of disconnect from the real world. Um, so I would, I, although I'll be honest, I'd probably, I, I'd probably say 10% of my reading is novels. And also this only includes my physical books. Most of the time I'm actually listening to audiobooks. So my bigger, I have an even bigger library on Audible. And I think you should use Audible. It's not, unfortunately it's not, this video is not sponsored by Audible. I wish, I wish it was because I love Audible so much. Um, if, you, if you have a hard time sitting down and reading a book, try listening to it. Very often, especially if you're an auditory learner like myself, like you just kind of absorb things really well when you listen. Uh, audiobooks are probably gonna be really good. So I'm curious what you think, like were there, did you, do any of these books look interesting to you? Or do you have any books yourself that you read that like you thought were life-changing? Um, please feel free to put it in the comments below. And actually I'm gonna link to a separate video that tells you five books that are really good for engineering students that you should read. And it may even be like somewhere over here. So you should click on it. Peace, love.